Hey folks, it's Echo here. Hope you've been enjoying your adventures in Alpha 20 thus far. Over the course of the dev streams, we repeatedly heard that performance in Alpha 20 would be similar to Alpha 19 and better in some instances. When pressed for a little bit more detail, we didn't really get it. So I am going to attempt to remedy that by doing some benchmarking and I'm by no means any type of engineer or anything when it comes to benchmarking games. Well, I'm going to give a stab at showing you two different systems and how it operates in different areas around the map on different settings. So regardless of whether you have a potato that you've been coaxing to play A19 and want to know if it can play A20, or if you have a gaming Goliath, this video should provide some additional insight into the performance in Seven Days to Die. So before I jump straight into the numbers, let's take a look at the map that we're working with, and I'll show you the different zones where I do the recording. I've outlined these zones essentially on the basis of density of buildings, and that's going to be both from a horizontal and a vertical perspective. This is also just based off of my experience of where I was experiencing different frame rates. So the first one we have here is the suburbs, and this is going to be your less packed, more spread out areas. The next area gets a lot more dense. This is going to be the cities, and you can tell that you've got more going on both from a vertical and a horizontal perspective. And lastly, I'll cover the tower zone. This is going to be the areas typically around like Deshaun Tower and Higashi Tower, where you just have massive density in a small area. Before jumping into the footage, I also wanted you to have a context of the hardware that I'm using so that you have a reference point for whatever system you're playing Seven Days to Die on. So the system you'll see shown on the left throughout the footage will be my 2017 HP Omen laptop. This critter had an i7, a GTX 1080, 32 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte SATA drive. On the right hand side, you'll see my new rig that I got this year that's got an AMD 3900X. And it's got an RTX 3080, 32 gigs of RAM again, and then a two terabyte NVMe drive. In terms of the video settings that I'll be using for this test, I'm gonna be working at 1920 by 1080. And then for quality, I'm gonna use all the standard settings. So I will be jumping in between medium, where you can see all the settings here, high, and then ultra. And I'm gonna be just using this straight out of the gate. I know that there's a lot of permutations that you can use with those, um, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. And lastly, dynamic mesh options. I'm gonna leave this also standard out of the box, which is turned on with distance at a thousand and leave the rest of this alone. So with that, let's jump on over into the suburbs and get started testing. So to give you the lay of the land, on the left side is my old system, on the right is the newer system. At the bottom center, you've got the average frames and broken up into the two sides. So right out of the gate, you can see a 10 plus frame difference between the old and the new system, but neither of those frame rates are particularly impressive. I think the other interesting thing to point out here is that if you look up at the GPU and CPU, neither of them on either system are completely taxed. All right, we're gonna stay in the suburbs, but jump over to high graphics. Here's where things get a little bit squirrely and weird. So if you look at the older system, it took a 10 frame dip but weirdly, the new system increased FPS by two. Now, I would think something's off on this other than everyone that I've spoken to in the content creator world has seen a lot of these weird fluctuations. And even if you're watching the FPS, it bounces up and down and doesn't have a regular feel to it. So let's see what happens when we crank this up to ultra. So this was another interesting shift where the older 2017 PC took only a four point hit to FPS. The newer system from this year took a 15 point hit when we turned this all the way up to ultra settings. So for a four year old system, this FPS is holding pretty solid. But when we look at the newer system, that's pretty disappointing. The other call out I'll make is that the GPUs seem to be pushed into that 80, 90% range, whereas they've sat below 50 for all the other settings. So the three locations that I've picked were based on density. So the next one we'll go to is the city, and this one just has a lot more verticality to it. So the assumption here was that this would probably have a little bit harder time to process and whatnot and have lower performance. We'll follow the same cadence as before, starting at medium settings, moving up through high, then ultra. So we're back on medium graphics and just move locations. And you can see initially a huge hit to the FPS. We're seeing a drop of 12 on the older system and about 15 on the newer system. Much like in the suburbs, the old system is not really seeing too much taxing around the 50% mark on both GPU and CPU. And the new system is not having a challenge at all, but for some reason can't seem to get the frames up. 
Additionally worth calling out is the massive amount of RAM that this is consuming. Let's flip the settings up to high and see how this trends. So here it looks like both systems took about a 14 frame hit to FPS, and this is really rough. So this type of area is one of the ones that I think most of us are very interested in playing in. And honestly, looking at this with a 3080 and then a 3900X CPU, I'm baffled by the FPS here. In terms of RAM, the same high consumption continues, and the processor on the older system seems to be heavily taxed, but again, GPU and processor on the newer system aren't having a hard time at all. So when we flip it up to Ultra, things get really swirly. Where the old system lost about three frames, the newer system lost seven and a half there. And this is almost bringing the two into equilibrium with each other, which is crazy given the four year difference between the hardware. In terms of RAM, we continue to have the same high usage that we've seen in all the other tests. One other observation on the ultra settings is that the highs and lows seem to be less and the FPS seems to be a little bit more stable, if not really damn low. So this is gonna bring us to the tower zone, which was honestly the reason why I decided to do this video. During the streamer weekend, I had the privilege of hopping on with Tamreki from Guns, Nerds, and Steel, and we were struggling with FPS anywhere within the shadow of Deshong Tower. I will say that when we got access to the public experimental on Monday, it felt a little bit better, but here's the numbers that I saw after running tests. We've moved back to medium graphics settings, and then we've pivoted between the city and the tower areas, and immediately we're seeing a six point hit on the older system and a full 10 point hit on the newer system around these tower areas. So it is better than what we were seeing over the streamer weekend, but this is still a pretty painful FPS for medium graphic settings and the level of hardware that we're tossing at this. Also of curious note, only a three point FPS difference between those two sets of hardware is very strange. All right, so moving into the high graphics, older hardware really took a hit here, took a 10 point dip, less so on the, the newer PC, but still we're, we're down into pretty painful FPS at this point in time for running high graphics anywhere around the towers. Looking at our other settings, we're seeing some of the same trends that we saw earlier, pretty low utilization on the graphic card and the CPU, high utilization on the RAM. So moving into ultra settings on the most taxing area, and we've got some really weird anomalies. First off, we took a 10 point hit and we're down to 21.4 on the lower end system, which shouldn't be too surprising given the age of the hardware. What should be surprising is that on the newer end hardware, we actually went up almost five points from where we were in the city region. So that's all I've got in terms of testing, and I will call out the fact that I recognize that there's some variability and that some of the FPSs are not the exact same gameplay side by side. So given all those variables, I still think you can take a look at these FPSs as an aggregate and say they're definitely not as high as we'd like to be. Now, I will call something else out for those of you with, you know, more mid end PC in this situation is that the delta between the mid and the high isn't nearly what I was expecting it to be. So I'm hoping this means that more people can still get in and play Alpha 20 because at the heart of it, I love this update. This has been a ton of fun. It's made the game much more difficult and challenging. One other thing to keep in mind is that we still are an experimental, so hopefully we'll see some additional performance enhancements roll out. So folks, I hope that gives you a good summary on performance in Alpha 20, Seven Days to Die. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and dropping a like. And Join me down in the comments and let me know what settings you've shifted from a video perspective and the FPS that you're getting out of your game. I definitely like to do a follow up to this video once I hear from some more folks on what's working for them. I've heard some instances of dynamic mesh impacting your FPS. I played with that a little bit and didn't see a lot of impact on my gameplay, but honestly, I've seen a lot of variability in FPS across the board. But that's what I got today, folks. If you have any additional questions, feel free to join me in Discord, links below in the description. Additionally, I've been streaming every Thursday evening off of the community server, which you're welcome to either join us and play or just join along and watch and, and ask questions there in chat. Hope everyone has a fantastic day and Echoes out.